Welcome back to Biomechanics on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to talk about what's called the stress strain curve. And this is a curve that's used to describe really the mechanics of the collagen fibers within tendons and ligaments. So we know that tendons and ligaments can stretch. Yeah, but there are limits to how much they can stretch, and there's also limits to their elasticity, where if we go beyond a certain point, we may not cause injury, but we can certainly lengthen that ligament permanently, so we can go beyond that elasticity. So let's talk about the features of this curve. On the vertical axis, we have stress, and on the horizontal, we have strain. So first of all, strain is really how much force is being used um, to put tension on a particular fiber or structure. So imagine taking a rubber band, you're gripping it with one hand on, on one side, one hand on the other, and you pull it apart. So when you pull on that rubber band, you're straining it. So strain is sort of more of the external part of that force when you're pulling it apart. In contrast, the stress is literally the stress of the fibers within the material being pulled. So when you're pulling the rubber band, the rubber band is composed of little bitty fibers that have some degree of extensibility. And so whenever you pull on those fibers, they start experiencing stress. And at some point, that stress might exceed their limit individually and they start to break. And if enough of them break, then the rubber band snaps. Okay, so we can strain on that rubber band all we want, but we want to limit how much stress the individual fibers in that rubber band feel because if we exceed a certain amount of stress, then they're going to pop and the rubber band snaps and it may hit you in the eye. You don't want to do that. So we can use the same analogy to describe ligaments and tendons. And so we have four major regions of the stress strain curve. We have a toe region, an elastic region, a plastic region, and beyond that, this is where we actually have injury to the tendon and ligament. So we'll begin by talking about the toe region. So the toe region is where the collagen fibers start to unfurl. So what does that mean? To unfurl means to sort of uncoil. So here's a representation of a collagen fiber before it's unfurled. So furl sort of means curled up, right? If you imagine this as a tug of war, so you have a rope like this, and you have one group on the right side, one group on the left side, and they're of course pulling on the rope to see who wins the tug of war battle. If you try tugging on a rope like this, okay, what's gonna happen? Well, it's going to unfold or unfurl into a straight line. And once it gets to this point, now you can play the tug of war, right? If you try to play tug of war on this, all that's gonna happen initially is both groups are gonna pull and this thing's gonna very quickly unfurl into a linear rope. And so if we think about this in terms of collagen fibers within a tendon or ligament, I mean, this curl is certainly exaggerated, but initially when we put tension on a ligament or tendon, it's not going to lengthen at all. All that's gonna happen to those collagen fibers are going to unfurl. And once they get into their linear forms, more or less, that's the way you could think about it, then we can start applying um, extensibility to them, okay? And when we look at this toe region, what we see is that as we put strain on the tendon or ligament, there's really not much increase in stress. And the reason there's not much increase in stress is because those fibers haven't yet become unfurled. But once they get into that linear form, and then we start applying a stress beyond that, then we're in what's called the elastic region. So the elastic region, this is where collagen fibers stretch with 100% elastic recoil. And for a lot of structures, this is a pretty wide region of the curve. Now, what does it mean to be elastic? Well, think about the rubber band. When I stretch that rubber band, I take it from its base length and I stretch it, that's the property of extensibility, okay? So if something's able to be lengthened like a rubber band, that's extensibility. Now what happens if when it's lengthened, you let go with one hand? It immediately snaps back to its original size. That is elastic recoil. So elastic doesn't mean it can stretch. That's extensibility. To be elastic, it has to be able to go back to its original shape or its original length. And so what we're saying is here within this elastic region of the curve, if I stretch that ligament or tendon 
it's going to return to its original size or its original length, we should say. Okay? So within this region, we have 100% elastic recoil. A really abstract way of thinking about it is if I took a ligament that's of length 5 inches and stretched it to 7 inches, when I let it go or release the tension on it, it's going to go right back to 5 inches. It won't go back to 5.1 or 5.2, it's going to be 5. That's 100% elastic recoil, and that's what occurs within the elastic region. In this animation, notice that every time the collagen fiber is stretched, it returns to its original length once the tension is released on it. And as long as we're in the elastic region of the curve, that's what we're going to expect to happen. All right, notice while we're in the elastic region here, we can increase the strain on those collagen fibers, but at some point they start feeling a lot of stress. And at a certain point, called the yield point, this is the limit of elasticity. So in other words, if we go beyond this yield point, those collagen fibers are not going to return to their exact resting length once we release the tension. Okay? So that begins what's called the plastic region. So in the plastic region right here, this is between what's called the yield point and the failure point. We'll come back to the failure point in just a minute. So what's really happening here in the plastic region? Well, if I start increasing the strain even further beyond that yield point, uh, what's happening is when I release the tension on that ligament or tendon, the collagen fibers, they'll shorten, but not back to their original length. So what does this all mean? Within the plastic region, if I start here and I apply some strain out to this point, we could use our example of a ligament of five inches or tendon of five inches, if we stretch it out to seven inches with that much strain, when we release it, it won't return to five inches. It may return to 5.1 or 5.2, but now you've had permanent lengthening because we've exceeded that ability of elastic recoil. Okay? And there are some times where this is actually therapeutic and we want to do this to lengthen a structure. If I take the strain out to here, maybe it goes from five inches to seven, but then it only returns to 5.5 inches, okay? And so within this plastic region, you're not necessarily causing injury, although you can, especially if you apply that force really quickly, uh, but really what you're seeing here are permanent length changes in the collagen fibers because you've exceeded that elastic recoil, but as long as you're careful in how these forces are applied, um, all you'll see are lengthening changes in those collagen fibers. And this is, in theory, how you lengthen a tissue. You can lengthen tendons, you can lengthen ligaments, uh, particularly um, if contractures ever develop. Notice in this animation that as we lengthen the collagen fiber, that it eventually does not go back to its baseline length. That's because we've exceeded its elastic recoil capacity, and we've exceeded that yield point. Now back here, we have this failure point. Now truly, if we're beyond the failure point, this is where we have injury. Okay? So notice that if we exceed that failure point, we can increase the strain, but the stress actually falls. And why does the stress fall? Because the structure actually ruptures. Okay? So when we're between the yield point and the failure point in the plastic region, we may be getting lengthening of the structure as a whole. That's because we're having what are called micro tears. If you've been exposed to muscle science at all, so going to the gym and doing resistance training, you know that micro tears are not a bad thing. In fact, in order to get hypertrophy of muscles, you have to have micro tears. But these are just that, they're micro tears. Beyond the failure point, this is a complete rupture. Okay? So that's why as we increase the strain, the stretch actually drops because now the tendon or ligament is not actually connected on one side, it's torn. And of course, rupture is an injury. Now I have the arrow starting here at the yield point because um, if a force was applied too quickly, uh, it could result in an injury, but generally we're gonna reserve the injuries for being after the failure point, okay? Now, what's an application of this? Well, suppose you had an individual who uh, needed to lengthen their Achilles tendon. Maybe the gastrocnemius had a contracture and we need to lengthen the Achilles tendon. Where would we want to be on this curve in terms of the strain applied to lengthen the Achilles tendon? We wouldn't want to be in the elastic region because that wouldn't lengthen it. 
we would maybe stretch the Achilles tendon, but it would go right back to its resting length. We need to be in the plastic region if we expect to actually get permanent changes in tissue lengthening. So we need to be somewhere in here between the yield point and the failure point in order to get permanent length changes in that Achilles tendon. However, if you apply too much force, which you see in sports all the time, a force or strain, I should say, that exceeds the failure point, then we get Achilles tendon rupture. And so then we get a tear. And depending on how much strain was used, it could be a grade one, a grade two, or a grade three tear. Now, this injury might seem a little bit obvious, but for those of you who want a visual representation, here's a short animation of what this looks like if we use too much strain and exceed that failure point. So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the stress strain curve for ligaments and tendons. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.